With Andy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is the OTP with Titans head coach Brian Callahan, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. In the game of health coverage, Farm Bureau Health Plans is the MVP. Tennesseans have relied on their unmatched rates, coverage, and service for nearly 80 years. The head coach is here. It is game week. Brian Finally. Callahan, welcome. Yeah. Welcome to kickoff week. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it is exciting, and I we obviously have a lot of football stuff to talk about, but before we get to the kickoff week stuff, I want to rewind just a hair because – I want to talk to you about last week's An Evening with the Titans dinner event. Sure. And at that event, you made the decision to announce the captains for this team at that event, which I think surprised a lot of people. What was your thinking behind doing that? Um, Wanted to make it special for the guys being announced. Um, I thought it was a cool venue to do so. Um, I can't take full credit for it. Tom Jones – does deserve some credit he he had initially brought the idea up to me and I said yeah if we can get the jerseys done so we called Joey in and uh, our equipment head of equipment and I said hey can you get these first of all do you have any C patches the um, captain's patch yes the patch and can you get it on these jerseys in you know <laughs> <laughs> like three hours he goes, yeah, no problem. We can we can get it done. And, and he goes, let me check and make sure I have the patches first. And thankfully, he found them somewhere in the equipment room. He had them stashed away, and um, he was able to get those jerseys done. And I think I got a text from – I got talked to Morgan uh, Cox, and then I got a um, text for some other – from Will, and, and just how they didn't even realize how much that was going to mean to them. Uh, I know Jeff was really excited to have the C patch on his jersey, and in the moment he was—you could see how excited he was. And, and Morgan had said that he hadn't—he uh, just—he goes, "I didn't think it would mean that much." He goes, "I couldn't stop looking at it." You know, like I had a jersey home that night, and so it means a lot to those guys. And I thought that was the proper, you know, form for us to kind of publicly. Our team was there for the most part. Now our whole coaching staff wasn't, but our team was there, and I thought that was a good venue to make it feel a little bit more special than just me telling them in a team meeting. Why is it important to you to establish traditions like that here in your very first year as a head coach? Because you're always trying to put your own twist on things and your own spin on, on whatever it is you do on a day-to-day basis. And so um, things that are new and exciting are new and exciting for the players too. And so I think that they they enjoy those things. They enjoy um, things different than what they've experienced before. And um, you know, there's the, when you build tradition and you build your program, you want to have certain markers during the course of the season and the off season that, that have some meaning and everyone's got their things. Um, but I thought that was a good place to, you know, try to put a little bit of emphasis on, on those captains and, and them representing our team. Amy, I didn't make Morgan Cox very happy because while he was standing up there with Brian, I said, hey, when you were at Tennessee, did you ever play against Brian when he was at UCLA? And Morgan gave me this look, and he stopped me in the lunchroom, too, to, again, let me know he wasn't thrilled with me pointing out his age. They didn't, by the way. (laughs) They did not play against one another. They just missed each other. Brian did admit at the dinner he played against Nick Folk when he was at Arizona. That is correct, yeah. But but I've got a better (laughs) one, though. This Sunday, you're going to see Mercedes Lewis. (laughs) <laughs> 40-year-old Bears tight end, Mercedes Lewis, the former first-round pick of the Jaguars yep. in 2006. Their second-round pick was Maurice Jones-Drew, who's yeah. now been on TV for 10 years. Right. What is it about Mercedes Lewis that has allowed him to play in the NFL yeah, for I don't, I don't know years? I, at, at that position, which yes. is yeah. traditionally one that – Deals with injury at a pretty regular rate. Just they're they're usually smaller than who they play against. History says they all get hurt at some point. Um, they break down a bit. But what he's been able to accomplish has been incredible. Mercedes and I were in the same recruiting class at UCLA. Um, he lived in the room right across the hall from me. Um, so I was teammates with Mercedes for four years, and um, he's he's the best. He's great. I, what he's been able to do for the as long as he's been able to do it is an incredible testament to uh, his toughness, um, his love of the game, because, boy, you got to love it to play that many years at that position. And he's been, you know, he was, he was, he's, he's, he's six, almost six, seven. He's 200 and 
seventy pounds now. I mean, he's a he's a big person, so he doesn't wear down maybe as much as some other guys that play the position too. But incredible tip of the cap to him that I think he is the longest tenured tight end in tight the history end in the of the history game. of football. Yeah, yeah. I I mean has to be. I actually so, played yeah. against Mercedes. I didn't play in this particular game, but we played against Mercedes when I was in high school. De La Salle High School of Concord, California. Went down to play Long Beach Poly High School in 2000 and 2001. And uh, it was the first time that the number one and number two ranked high school teams played each other in a regular season game. Mercedes was on that Long Beach Poly team, which was loaded with talent. Yeah, they're generally As they good. always are. Yeah, they're yeah. generally okay. So he was <laughs> – he, uh, yeah, but what I mean, what an incredible, what an incredible player in person he is. He's, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him him before the game. Well, let's talk about that game a little yeah. bit because we are officially in preparation for Week One against the Chicago Bears. How do you kick off that preparation this week? Um, slowly this week because we get a bonus day today. So players were off. For those that don't know, players were off uh, the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sundays. You saw a lot of guys back at their alma maters and things like that. It's a good weekend to just take a deep breath from training camp and, and really tra- transition into the into the regular season. So we came back today as a bonus day, so we still practiced, and it was regular practice. We just kind of went against ourselves, and uh, we didn't do any real prep. Um, even my team meeting today wasn't even about Chicago. It's they're, they're just – we're not quite there yet, even though you can feel it. It is a game week, but Tuesday's the off day, and Wednesday we'll start the regular prep. We've, we've gotten ahead as a coaching staff. Um, we've introduced bits and pieces to the players, but I've always found that – too much time on your hands um, tends to be little, lead to some over analysis and overthinking when you just, you know, you don't get this extra time for any other game. So just treat it the same and start Wednesday when you're supposed to start. Go about your business. Yeah. Um, so the injury report will come out on Wednesday. Yep. And for a player who's been injured like a DeAndre Hopkins who hasn't practiced in several weeks, as you prepare to go forward from a game plan standpoint, when do you need to have an idea you're you're going to have players like that available or you're not? Um, earlier is always better, but you can manage that at some positions a little easier than others. You know where where you can you can wait till a Thursday or Friday and and just make sure they have the handful of plays that you that they need to make sure they're focused in on. That's where it does get easier now is that now you're you're working through a game plan, and so there's only so many plays you have up in a game, and it's not like training camp where you're pulling from eight or nine or ten installs in your entire offense and there's just a lot more that everything tightens down and so you can you can use players in limited roles or whatever role their physical ability lets them play in so uh, not a huge deal if it's you know for him if we don't get the green light by Friday or if it's if we get the red light on Wednesday it doesn't matter I'll, I'll I can manage either either one of those scenarios um, with a guy like that Hey, Titans fans, celebrate each Titans win and enjoy the sweet taste of victory with a free donut at Kroger the very next day. Just download your digital coupon to score your free donut at any Kroger store. It's our way of saying thanks. Now, let's be clear. It's one free donut per transaction while supplies last. Kroger, fresh for everyone and official grocer of the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up. Home is at the forefront of all that we do. It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. As we continue with Brian Callahan, let's now talk defense. So let's start with linebacker Ernest Jones. How do you <laughs> expect to utilize him on Sunday? Yeah, he's going to play. I mean, he's he's we 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 traded for him and signed him for a reason, um, and that's to help us. Um, obviously, Jack Gibbons has certainly has more time on task, and so that's probably where uh, the game starts. But but he's going to have a role, and he's going to play some. And and really, the more comfortable he gets, the more he learns. It's like learning a new language. You know, he's got to pick up the verbiage. And again, it's it's a little easier in a game week because it's it's tighter. The package is tighter. But um, it's really going to be up to him on how fast he learns and feels comfortable and can communicate the the verbiage and terminology. So um, looking forward to seeing that role grow for him. And and we're going to use all our linebackers. I mean, there's all kinds of roles those guys can fill. So um, I would anticipate seeing him on the field. 
We did not see Harold Landry at all in the preseason, but he ended the 2023 season in a pretty remarkable fashion. He was one <laughs> of the best pass rushers in the National Football League. How do we think that he is going to be able to pick up where he left off in the 2024 season? Everything about what Harold's done and where he's at would lead me to believe that he's not far from where he was when he finished. Um, he's been he's had a really really good training camp. He had a hell of an off season in terms of workout wise. He's really was in shape. He was dialed in. He was he was fantastic. And so he's also done this for a while now. And those are the guys as they stack years in the league where you end up saying, I know what it's going to look like. Um, so I feel really good about where Harold's at and what that's going to look like for us. Um, but he's, I anticipate him playing really good football, him and, you know, him and Jeff, the two guys that have, you know, been here probably the longest almost. And then the guys that have played the most for us over the years. And so those guys are, I anticipate seeing the same version of those guys that everybody knows and loves. Harold Landry, Arden Key, and then who else do you expect to see take part in the rotation at outside linebacker this weekend at Soldier Field? Um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be those guys. It'll be um, you know Jalen Harrell will, will play, um, Caleb Murphy will play. Uh, we'll see how far um, Ali comes along. Uh, those guys are all viable options. I think we got you know you got six guys for probably what's going to be five active spots uh, on the game day roster, but. Um, you know, what that rotation looks like will kind of be determined. But we're going to need those guys to help us and step in and play a role because uh, it's hard to play every snap uh, if you're Harold and Arden. So uh, we're going to need two more guys to be able to step up and play for us. You also have four defensive linemen on the roster. Mm -hmm. Depth-wise, do you feel like you can mix and match enough defensive personnel to get through the game with four defensive linemen? Yeah, we probably won't go in with four. We'll probably elevate from the practice squad um, most likely uh, just to get the fifth We'll carry five most most games with some version of five D linemen for the for the active roster just because you need those spots. So the answer is no. I don't feel comfortable with with four, and that's that's why we have the practice squad spots, and um, we can do some standard elevations. They each get a few of them, and then we'll go from there, and we'll see where the roster's at in two three weeks. All right, a lot of new on the Chicago Bears offense. Keenan Allen at wide receiver, DeAndre Swift at, in the running back position. Obviously, Caleb Williams, the rookie quarterback, Shane Waldron, the offensive coordinator. Um, is it hard to get a handle on what Chicago's offense is going to look like with all the new? Um, probably no harder than it is for them to get a handle on us with all the new. I think it's very similar in that regard that um, they got new coaching, new players, uh, quite a few, and um, some unknowns and a, and a rookie quarterback. And so we're going to find out. Um, you know, I, you can you can watch what they've been in their previous places. Obviously, we know what Keenan Allen can do and Swift and you watch Caleb Williams as a college player, you know what he's capable of, and you see his preseason tape and you see the things that you saw when he was in college. And so all of those things will, will be – they'll be dealing with the same things that we are. With There's some unknown, there's some new, um, not a ton of continuity across the board, but certain spots have some. And, you know, I think Shane's – I've known Shane for a long time. I think Shane's a really, really good football coach. I think he did a really nice job in Seattle. And so you try to base on what maybe he's done before and what things he leans on, but at the end of the day they got to – different set of players than he did in Seattle. And so um, he'll have his own twist for their roster they have now. So it's just a matter of settling in and finding your way through the first part of the game is usually always the always the hardest part. Switching to offense, what is Will Levis's main challenge this Sunday against Chicago's secondary? Yeah, it's a good defense. Um, I, I wish we got to open up against, like, Southwestern Missouri State, you know, <laughs> so we could – so we could really get our get our bearings, but no, we got to go against the Chicago Bears and that defense. That's um, they got really different bears. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you yeah. do. <laughs> uh, but I just think that he's going to have to be smart with the ball. You know, the the name of the game usually in this first week or two of the season is is how well you take care of the football, how much you minimize your own mistakes. You know, I mean, there's a there's an element of we just need to do our jobs first and need to worry about what we can do and not necessarily worry as much about them because that's where sometimes the mistakes happen. You try to do too much, and, and that's what wins and loses these opening couple of games. It's probably the first three weeks of the season is how well do you just execute what you're good at, and, and that's what I'm going to ask of Will is just do the things he's good at and um, manage the game from that standpoint and keep the ball in our possession and make sure we're making good decisions and completing the football, and then we'll be aggressive when we need to. But there's definitely a uh, don't beat yourself in the first week, and that's going to be a, a big part of it is – playing smart football.
It's Bears coach Matt Eberflus's defense. That's his background. But there is a new defensive coordinator in Eric Washington. Mm-hmm. Do you expect any tweaks from what you've seen from an Eberflus defense, especially when he was totally running it at the end of 2023? You know, I think that's his that's his MO. That's what he's cut his teeth on is, is defensive football, and he's been a part of a lot of really good defenses. I got a ton of respect for Coach Eberflus and – Places he's been, times I played against them, I know what the what they're all about. I know what we're in for, um, so I, I anticipate seeing a lot of that. Now, uh, Eric Washington has had a really good run uh, in Buffalo, and they did a really nice package of things in Buffalo on defense. And so I, I'm I'm assuming we'll see some flavor of what he's done. That's why they hired him um, is to is to bring some maybe new ideas and new perspective, and and um, I'm sure he'll do that. And so they've not shown much. Um, and, of course, I'm sure they'll have plenty to show us on Sunday. So I'm anticipating a little bit of, of maybe some things he's done in his past mixed with what uh, they major in with, with Coach Eberflew. So um, I think they got the makings of a pretty pretty dang good defense. So the Bears only had 20 sacks last season, which is why they added players like Montez Sweat. So you have to figure that they're going to be trying to set a tone on Sunday. How does Bill Callahan prepare – the offensive line for what figures to be a full-on assault yeah, on Sunday. They know what they're in for. I mean, that's that's the one thing about um, having a having a coach that's been coaching for forty plus years. <laughs> he knows how to do it, and so that that much I do know is that they will be prepared for what they're about to face, um, both schematically and and in intensity. I think those, all those things will be um, we'll be ready to match whatever it is uh, we're seeing. And hopefully exceed it, but um, yeah, there it's it, it is. You got a team that's trying to make a mark. They have a lot of a lot of enthusiasm around their their building, and they should. They they are a very good football team, um, and our job is to is to not let that get off the ground. Week one, they can have it after us, but week one, I'd like to not let them have all that momentum. But it's 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 a tough task going on the road. That place will be loud. Chicago's a great place to play. It's a great football city. Um, they're excited about their team. They got a young quarterback that everyone wants to see. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a pretty hellacious environment. What constitutes a successful rushing performance for the Titans on Sunday in Chicago? What's good running the ball? Yeah, I mean, you always. I'm, I really get more into the in the carries can be skewed. You know, if you're just looking for volume of carries, because hopefully you have a lead and you're in the fourth quarter trying to run the ball a bunch to to, get, to kill the game, um, and that's where you can that's where those carries uptick a ton. I'm really more concerned about the yards per carry mark and and our and our rush efficiency and our ability to generate some explosives. I'd love to be able to run the ball uh, and hit a few explosives in there. And then the efficiency to us is always a really critical stat. You know, are we are we up above 50% in our efficiency and are, are we are we earning positive uh, EPA? We use EPA quite a bit. So are we are we earning positive EPA every time we hand the ball off, or is it, it was a negative? And so. All those things factor in, but I think we look a lot at, at the the yards per carry, which means you're getting explosives and your ability to have positive um, EPA, either percentage and or outcomes. So it's kind of nerdy, but that's what it is. But it's okay. <laughs> that's why I looked at Mike. <laughs> well, it's for example, I mean, yeah. if you have third and one and you get two, that's a positive carry, even Correct. though you only got two yards on a carry. Correct. So that's that's we use all those things. If you're if it's first and ten and and you get you know you get six. Or you get five. Um, that's a huge. That's that's a really good run for the spot. If it's second and four, and you get a first down, it's only four yards, but it's a first down. That's a much more positive play than you, you get it. But that's she the looks idea. at me because she knows I love that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I called you a nerd. That's okay. You <laughs> called me worse. Let's talk about tight ends, shall we? Yeah. You've got five tight ends <laughs> on this roster. Yep. Realistically, can five tight ends be active on Sunday in Chicago? N- no, no, they can't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, they Let's dumb this back down. Yeah. <laughs> no, they can't. It's a good question. It is. I mean, it, it would. It would. If you went at five tight ends, you'd be really thin somewhere else. Um, probably they, they they fill similar special teams roles. So you probably are given and taken at linebacker or safety. That those three positions sort of make up your core special team. So no, f- five is a lot. Um, it's just going to be a de- determination between the fourth active tight end and the fifth active linebacker or the fifth or fourth active safety. It just That's just going to be a weekly gymnastics for us on, on where they factor in the game plan versus where they factor on special teams. So um, there could be weeks where they're both down and we only carry three, uh, or there could be weeks where it's just one one versus another. 
um, or sometimes injury sort of settles that for you. Um, but it's a week to week thing. Attention Titans fans, are you looking to unlock the power of your home equity? Wesley Mortgage is here to help with their amazing home equity line of credit or HELOC options. With a HELOC from Wesley Mortgage, you can access the funds you need for home improvements, debt consolidation, or even that dream vacation. Plus, with flexible terms and competitive rates, it's easier than ever to achieve your financial goals. Visit WesleyMortgage.com today to learn more and get started. That's WesleyMortgage.com. Wesley Mortgage, where your home's equity works for you. Hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. SeatGeek. <laughs> You know what this Sunday is going to mean to Bears fans with their rookie quarterback opening at home for this new season filled with optimism for their team. You know you're going to be walking into a crazy soldier field. Are there concerns or how are you adjusting for the fact that communication is probably going to be a bit of a struggle because it will be quite loud? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I think that's every road we every road game in, in some of these stadiums. You know, it's it's, it's going to be particularly loud and boisterous, I think, for the opening game for all the reasons you said. Um, but we just have to work our process. We, we, we work our silent cadence all through training camp. We use noise. Um, we work on our, our nonverbal communication on both sides of the ball. It's obviously a lot louder for us on offense than it is for our defense. should be pretty quiet for them, but that's always a process where we continually work on. It's, it's not one we take for granted, and it's one that we actually do spend quite a bit of time on. So I feel good about where we're at there. I mean, not to say it's going to be – super smooth. I mean, you'd, you'd hope to not have any false starts, but it's going to be a tough environment. So uh, we'll, we'll do our best to come out as clean as we can on the on the penalty sheet, and um, and hopefully we can communicate well enough to, to operate. You are going to a place that is very special to the Callahan family. Yes, it sure is. Dad, this, <laughs> Dad is very much from there. I think you were born there, were you not? I was born in Champaign, so okay. I was born just Illinois-ish, but I mean, I grew up I grew up a Bears fan, yeah, um, because that's what you know Bears, Bulls, and, and Blackhawks. When I was a kid, that's what we we were in, at the University of Wisconsin. That's before I, my, my dad was in pro football, and so the only real football team I used to remember watching was was the Bears because that's what all my uncles and my aunt, everybody lived in Chicago. And when I was a kid, we were down there all the time. I've spent, I mean, I've been to all those the zoos, the museums, and up and down. I've been all all over Chicago for a long time, and it's I have very fond memories of Chicago, even though I didn't grow up there. Um, but yeah, my mom and dad are, are Chicagoans through and through and, uh, to open up at, at Chicago has got to be a little cool for my dad, I think to some degree. Um, but it's, it's a great place. It's a great city. It's a great football city. It's great history there. Um, it's a, it's a fantastic organization and it's, you know, it's one that's been hungry for, for what they have right now. And that's a, a team that people are excited to come watch. And Great story about your dad during the Wisconsin days in the athletic at the end of last week. It was. I, I thought, wow. uh, yeah, I thought that was really cool. I, I don't know how many people saw it, um, but, but I thought Joe did a really nice job researching and writing it. It was really well done. Um, and, yeah, there's some things that sometimes I, I still learn some things every now and again about, about how he was back then. But, yeah, that was a, that was a wild time, those Wisconsin years. And, um, all that, all the things that they did to turn that program around uh, was 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 pretty awesome. But it was really well done and really well researched uh, by Joe Rexroad there at the Athletic. Brian Callahan, thank you so much for the time. Always a pleasure. For Amy Wells and Coach Brian Callahan, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you, the OT people, for joining us for the OT people.